All right, so um, again, hello to everyone. Uh, welcome to our panelists. Welcome everybody in the Zoom room, hello. And also to everyone following us on Facebook. We're so happy to be here together to see you uh, and to um, just discuss together. And uh, I want to start off with wishing everybody a happy Pride Month. So happy Pride. <laughs> Um, and we will be discussing the situation of LGBT plus people in Russia. Uh, sadly, over the weekend, there have been uh, some developments that we will address as well. Uh, and that just highlight how dangerous and hostile uh, the atmosphere uh, has become uh, for all those who are fighting for love and equality under the so-called anti-gay propaganda laws. And um, during this discussion, we will also spend some, uh, a lot of time uh, asking our panelists uh, about um, how the international community can support them and what we can do together and as individuals to take action. Um, I want to also say that everybody in the Zoom room and on Facebook, you can ask us questions, please do so. Uh, to everyone, post the questions in the comments on Facebook, in the Zoom chat, and we will try our best to address as many as possible. Um, and our panelists will be able to answer them after our discussion. And um, talking about uh, supporting our LGBT plus siblings in Russia, I want to start off with actually presenting a, a little opportunity on how you can support and uh, one of the reasons we got together today. Um, together with our friends from Unicorns and Tech in Germany, All Out has developed a tool that helps visualize the support we all feel in our hearts uh, digitally. And I will share really quickly my screen to show you uh, what I am talking about. Um, Is this visible to everyone? Great. So this is our LGBT support map. This is the city of St. Petersburg. And because um, it is really hard to gather in peaceful protest, we thought we wanted to give everyone the opportunity to show their love and support and actually visually show up. Um, I have to reload this here. How this works is everybody in the world can go to this map and tag themselves, which uh, is, <laughs> um, give me a second, it'll work in a moment. Make it bigger, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I swear it just, I think it's going too quickly. Well, in general, you can <laughs> tag yourself here and place your own flag. Place your own flag and decorate it with just emojis that show your support, your spirit, pride, uh, strength and hearts to everyone in the community. And as you can see, there's already thousands of people that have supported us. Um, from more than 95 countries. So while we are speaking, please take the opportunity and tag yourself in that map to show your support. And now I will be introducing our panelists. Okay, sorry, that took me a second with the map. All right, so welcome to everyone once again for me. I will give a quick introduction. We have uh, Svetlana here, who is a feminist and LGBT activist and human rights defender based in Russia. She's also a board member of the Russian LGBT Network, one of the biggest organizations for LGBT right in, uh, rights in the country. Uh, we're also very happy to welcome uh, Yuri uh, Gavrikov, Gavrikov 
an experimental physicist um, who turned his attention towards LGBT rights and started to co-organize actually St. Petersburg Pride with fellow activists in 2010. Also welcome to Olga uh, Okotnikova. Uh, she, is a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she is a human rights lawyer, journalist and executive director of Coming Out. And before joining Coming Out, she also worked in the London-based NGO uh, litigating uh, human rights violations in post-Soviet countries. And she has also developed an online crisis center for Russian survivors of sexual abuse. Uh, and Polina Adrianova, who was born in Leningrad, uh, today St. Petersburg, welcome to you as well. Uh, after studying abroad, she actually returned to Russia in 2007 and started working in human rights, supporting LGBT people and other minorities. Hello to everyone. <laughs> um, I want to get started um, with you, Svetlana, actually. 2020 has been uh, kind of easing into it. <laughs> uh, it's been um, quite a challenging year for all of us uh, around the world. And I, I want to know how the COVID-19 pandemic has actually affected your life and work and how uh, did it impact the Russian LGBT community? Thank you, Stana. Hello, everyone, and happy Pride, everyone. And yes, of course, the obvious question, uh, the, the obvious answer is yes, of course, uh, all the situation with COVID-19 affected greatly LGBT community and life in Russia in general. When people do talk about um, influence the effect of COVID-19 on LGBT community, quite many people talk about pride. But in fact, in terms of freedom of expression and freedom of demonstration in Russia, the situation didn't change that much. I'm sure that Yuri will talk uh, later on about that and can tell much better than I can tell uh, how it's going to be and actually if St. Petersburg Pride is going to happen but well we have like serious issues with the freedom to assembly to peaceful assembly and just yesterday more than 40 people were detained just because they were organizing single man pickets in support of feminist and LGBT activist Yulia Svitkova and Yulia Svitkova is also like is a person who just published some pictures, very innocent pictures online, pictures like uh, portraying women with the words real women have wrinkles or fat and uh, pictures of same sex families with a word like families love. And because of that, she's accused right now, first of dissemination of pornography and second of propaganda. And like, this is something we have to face and we are facing it. And of course our authorities abuse a lot our like right to freedom of expression. But uh, of course, we also have um, all other kinds of issues related to COVID-19, like uh, in all other parts of the world. We have a difficulty, difficult economic situation. And of course, LGBT people quite often um, affected disproportionately. For instance, quite many people, they're leaving their hometowns and going to big cities, they're getting flat, they're starting work. And right now, at some point, they're losing work. They cannot pay rent anymore, and many of them even cannot go back to the families because their families are homophobic quite often. And they're in this situation where like, they don't have really support other people can enjoy, and they don't know where to go. Um, of course, like transgender people affected even more because in Russia quite often they work without like proper contract. And when they're losing jobs, they cannot even uh, get any like uh, public funds or any kind of reimbursement for this job. We have uh, a lot of difficulties with the psychological situation among the community. Of course, right now, uh, we don't have that big like isolation uh, measures as it was before, but people are still uh, anxious. They still don't know uh, how life is going to be later on, what's going to happen. So um, all other problems they have are getting bigger and more accurate and we're getting more and more requests for psychological support. And in this situation, quite many people, they even cannot get this psychological support because quite often they are locked together with relatives who are homophobic or don't know about their sexual orientation or gender identity. So they even cannot get, you know, this like psychological consultation online. So like all kinds of issues, but I'm sure that more or less the same issues LGBT community face all around the world. We try to mitigate like all these things as possible, 
but of course we cannot do a lot in terms of the size of the country because it's just huge and we are like one of the biggest organizations in Russia but still not big enough but we were lucky actually enough to um, to be able to relocate part of our funds to provide support for local organizations who can directly support people in the regions to provide food shelter hormonal therapy like very very basic needs and well at least we can do that Yeah, I see. Thank you, Svetlana. Actually, let me segue into another question to you for that. Um, give us a little bit of a framework. Like, how was is the current situation for LGBT? You already started uh, getting into it a little bit in general. And have there been any recent developments that you want to highlight? It is huge, <laughs> and it is a hard question to answer in few sentences or even in few paragraphs. Um, I would say that the situation is very, very controversial. There are many different layers and tendencies. Sometimes they're going into the opposite directions and it's really hard to understand even for me what is going on. I would say that there are two big things. The first one I call the state. Uh, we have all this state-sponsored propaganda and it really exists and on uh, like uh, federal mass media, which are state controlled. We can see this picture of uh, homosexuals, bisexuals, transgender people as, I don't know, very dangerous animals. And most people in Russia, they're still getting most of information from TV and they have you know, this image, quite a horrible picture. We have the police, which quite often refuse to register or to investigate cases. We have the situation in Chechnya, which still exists. And of course, it is an extreme example, but it's still something that is going on in Russia. And it is truly terrific. And there is another thing. And uh, it's very different from what I already described. I call it society. And society in Russia is actually more sophisticated than the authorities for like obviously. And I can see more people joining the movement. I can see more people who want to do something in different parts of Russia, who are not ready to just, uh, you know, take it. They want to change the society. They feel uh, their responsibility for the society and they're involving more and more. I can see how young people are different. Just last year, there was a public poll opinion among school children. They were asked many, many questions and also questions about the LGBT community. And absolute majority of them said that they don't think that such thing as propaganda exists. So all these like children, people who were kind of protected by the state with this legislation, they don't believe in propaganda. And moreover, I think that more than 50% of them said that they are for equal marriage for everyone. And it is amazing. It means that the society is changing despite of like, you know, everything what's going on. And just recently there was this video ролик published by the state propaganda about um, same sex parents to men who are adopting child from an orphanage. And basically the authorities tried to present it as, you know, terrific picture of the future. What's going to happen if like, we will not change the constitution. But the truth is quite many people say it, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's not like that. It just like, it can be normal family, why not? And I was actually astonished by the level of support and it gave me a lot of hope actually that situation in Russia can change actually faster than I think. Yeah, so that is uh, good to hear. And probably in many countries when you don't listen only to the propaganda underneath there is uh, a lot of support and those are the people we're counting on. Um, I want to go a little bit more into detail and actually ask uh, you, Holly and uh, Olga, a bit about the situation in St. Petersburg. Uh, Coming Out has recently published uh, as, um, a report on the situation of LGBT community in St. Petersburg. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your findings uh, compared and compare 2019 to previous years and see what you make of that. Um, I don't know who would like to start. Just go ahead. Sure, I'll start. So um, firstly, thank you for inviting us. And I'll just say a bit about coming out in general. So coming out is the largest grassroots organization since St. Petersburg, and we operate since 2008. 
I've joined it quite recently, about three months ago. And during this time, we indeed published the report. And comparing these findings in 2019 to 2018 and the previous years, we'd like to say that there are actually no significant changes. So statistically, uh, nothing really changed. Uh, there are several important um, cases that happened in 2019, such as killing uh, a, a murder of Yelena Grigorieva in July 2019. So, and it has several important consequences. So firstly, she was quite well known in the community and many people knew her personally. So for them, it was uh, a huge stress. And uh, secondly, since we connect uh, her murder to uh, the movement called Pillai Against LGBT, so because she received threats, uh, sorry, threats from them. So we see it as, as this sort of breach between hate speech and hate crime. So the community is actually, uh, so now they actually see the, uh, the threats as something real, something that could uh, endanger your life. And these fears are further justified by the fact that the police uh, is as homophobic and transphobic as they used to be. So that is why statistically uh, nothing realistically changes. And uh, we also see that the police is using uh, this vulnerability that the community has uh, for their own advantage. So they try and fulfill their own plans, uh, knowing that uh, LGBT people are less likely to come and report. So they, for instance, use these dating apps uh, to sell drugs to gay men. So they also use fake dates, uh, which is when a, a gay man goes on, on a dating app to meet another man. And when he arrives on the spot, there is someone else and they try and extort money, uh, knowing that the person feels so much shame because of their sexual orientation that they wouldn't go to the police. So we also know that uh, there are some fake dates gangs operating in St. Petersburg and that some of them even have former policemen operating within these gangs. So they know very well all these mechanisms and it's quite uh, quite terrifying, I would say. And we see this, this one big trend I would like to say about is this growing impunity. So it is normal now in, in Russia to be homophobic, like uh, among the general population, it is not shameful. And what we see right now happening with the constitution is just uh, the amendments is they, they fix this discrimination legally and they say that this is normal and, you know, we expect that this impunity is going to grow, sadly. And good things are that, of course, people report more which is what our report shows, that people report more about this general <clears throat> sort of threatening behavior that they encounter. And it's not that this threatening behavior become, uh, has become much more often, but people just report it more. And that is why we value our work and we would like to continue it and gather as much information as we can, because still what we gather is kind of tip of the iceberg. And there are many more LGBT people in St. Petersburg. Now I'm just delegating to Polina. Uh, yes, <clears throat> thank you. And happy Pride, everybody. Very, very happy to be joining this event and to feel the support of so many people, especially in this times of isolation. It's very important. I just want to add a little bit about uh, why we do this, why we gather this um, um, data on discrimination and violence against LGBT people. This, of course, constitutes the basis for further evidence-based advocacy for us. And without this evidence, uh, our case is not very strong. Our government, of course, says, um, you know, there's nobody discriminated against LGBT people, they're fine, while the government enshrines discrimination uh, in law and now in, in constitution. So our society hears the government's propaganda, remains ignorant and ignorant ignorance breeds discrimination and violence, so it's this vicious cycle that's happening. But the data that we collect allows us to show society, to sh shine light uh, through numbers, through faces, through personal stories on the real situation, on what's really happening, to raise this much needed uh, awareness. So I want to share just a couple of examples of how this data is used uh, in our work to achieve some kind of success. 
Um, and one, one story I want to share is our work with the St. Petersburg Ombudsman for Human Rights. Um, there is an ombudsman in every region of, of Russia, and ours in St. Petersburg was initially quite reluctant to collaborate in any way with LGBT organizations. He would say things like, um, problems of sexual minorities are blown out of proportion. This is not the problem. This is not the most important issue in Russia and so forth. So we kept coming to him. We kept uh, providing him this data, explaining to him why it's important. And today it's a whole different story. Uh, today he includes the data that we gather into his human rights reports. He pre presents it publicly, uh, which of course gives it more weight, more legitimacy in the eyes of uh, authorities. Another very important thing that he's done for us is create this bridge between us and, and the police in St. Petersburg. Uh, and thanks to this, for a couple of years in a row, we were able to organize more or less safe uh, public rallies, uh, the largest LGBT rallies actually, that were able to gather 200, 300 people under some protection of police. Um, and what's hugely important about that is that um, there are a lot of LGBT people who are not ready to be on the for, like, forefront of activism. They're not ready to be, to take on risks like being arrested. So, so this kind of collaboration with police allows us to uh, provide them with spaces where they can, with spaces of pride where they can show that they're part of the city and feel a little bit safer. Um, one more thing I wanna mention is working with allies such as businesses. Uh, the bad news is that our, our survey shows that the situation of LGBT people at the workplace is not so good. About 66% of people experience some kind of harassment, bullying, talking behind their backs, outings, and so forth. But the very good news is that today we see businesses that two, three years ago were just running away from LGBT topic as a plague. Uh, today they are much more open to collaboration and we launched a project to help businesses to uh, improve the atmosphere at the workplace to make workplaces more friendly for LGBT people. And it's businesses, multinational firms and small businesses, 15 of them are collaborating with us today. So that's another uh, good movement in the right direction. Last thing I want to mention, and Svet Svetlana already mentioned this as well, um, is there are some good news on the public opinion front. I mean, on, on the one hand, hate speech, uh, everyday discrimination is becoming more common. But on the other, there are actors in society who are beginning to speak up for LGBT rights, um, bloggers, journalists, performers, actresses. So this, this is going to be a very important going into the future. And this, of course, all of the things I mentioned is a result of many years of effort on the parts of LGBT organizations in Russia. I'll finish here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Olga and Polina. It's uh, good to hear also some ways how you're fighting back and that there is some progress uh, already being made. Um, okay, I want to circle back a little bit and ask you, Yuri, um, about the crackdowns that we have seen in recent years, especially St. Petersburg. Pride has been uh, under attack. Um, just last year, 11 activists were arrested uh, during a Pride event. Just yesterday, as uh, Svetlana already mentioned, 40 uh, people, mostly women, were actually arrested uh, for protesting against uh, Yulia Tsvetkova's um, charges. And uh, there's also the fact that we're talking about St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg is traditionally a bit more liberal and progressive. Um, and I want you to kind of uh, tell us a little bit about this disconnect, like how does that articulate itself and uh, how is it different from the rest of Russia? Uh, thank you, first of all, for this question. And I would say that, um... I'm glad to see you all, to feel and distance it. Uh, first of all, our city is not like uh, an island in the ocean. We are, uh, despite uh, culture, despite uh, very historical background, um, we are still the part of country. And 
all of the political situation, all of the social movement happens in different part of country. And St. Petersburg, despite all of these developments uh, you already mentioned, uh, is still uh, experience. I mean, our society and uh, St. Petersburg people living in St. Petersburg are still experiencing exactly the same uh, problems as uh, any other part of the uh, country. And when, when we started in 2010 for the first time, uh, the Pride uh, movement in St. Petersburg, we, we had the kind of hope that, or, or we had the kind of understanding that uh, you cannot reach uh, changes really quick. And, <clears throat> and for these 10 years, we, had, uh, we have observed many, uh, many changes. For example, the terminology in the media uh, changed quite a lot. Um, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when some media mentioned uh, uh, LGBT, they always mentioned something like sex uh, minorities. Um, and then we transferred from these uh, words to uh, gays and lesbians, and then Toward, uh, towards uh, LGBT community. And it's important because uh, it's not just about sex, it's not uh, about uh, something related to, uh, to, to interaction between people, it's more related to uh, social understanding and social meaning of these uh, um, words, I mean, LGBT community. We are a social group and uh, as a social group, we have the same rights. And if these rights are violated from the, from the government, <clears throat> then we have, uh, we, we experience uh, uh, many troubles in, 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 the, in our life. And as I told you, city, St. Petersburg is a city with uh, quite, uh, quite good background uh, in culture and history. And, it helps. It helps really to create a kind of um, community with uh, different LGBT organizations, with uh, different cultural events, with uh, people involved involved into politics, into uh, elections, uh, into different type of uh, process, social process, which are not related uh, to LGBT but they are more global, more important for the country, for our um, politics. And, and I think uh, all of these developments uh, in St. Petersburg, they can, can work as a spark, you know, to inspire people in different regions and uh, people can be, uh, can start, can you know, can can share this experience and transfer it to other part of countries, and it helps a lot. Uh, and we have we have these examples. Uh, many many organizations uh, already uh, appeared in uh, this ten years, fifteen years, and in different regions. And we see how how many changes we can reach for such a short amount of time for ten years. And I, I would say that uh, similarities, uh, we can uh, observe some similarities with uh, historical steps in other countries like US, like uh, United Kingdom. But we are in different situation now. We have uh, internet, we have many uh, uh, experience we can share from our friends from around the world. And, and I believe that it can really create a, a unique chance, unique moment of uh, historical moment to, to develop uh, things much faster than in other countries, European countries and uh, uh, other countries around the world. Uh, thank you so much, Yuri. Um, that is... Um 
actually the perfect segue to the next thing I wanted to ask you all, actually. I want, we want to discuss um, what do you see in the near future for the LGBT plus movement in Russia? What are your uh, hopes and fears? What are you going to work on? Uh, you don't have to um, spend 10 minutes on everything. Just like give us the key points where you feel uh, the most work should be done and can be done. Uh, Svetlana, would you like to start maybe? Yeah, I actually already said that I'm quite optimistic and maybe too optimistic, but why would I do all these things and why would I be part of LGBT plus movement if I wouldn't believe? I actually think that the situation with LGBT plus rights is changing very fast and is changing to the better. And of course, there is a backlash and it's kind of not only in Russia, but in all parts of the world. And I see this backlash, but at the same time, I mean, I can see how things are changing and Paulina was right. It's a lot of efforts of people who are working for many years, like many, many, many maybe tens of years. And there, is, there are some results. So I'm actually very positive and they have a lot of hope in new generation and people who are well still quite, quite different from like ourselves. I, when I talk ourselves, I'm talking about people who was born in Leningrad as well as Paulina. I think that they're different and yeah. Let's hope. Thank you. Well, Paulina, would you like to follow up on that? Sure, I'll just turn my microphone on. <laughs> um, yes, I, I agree very much with what, what Svetlana said. Um, on the one hand, the political situation is it's not getting better. It's not probably going to get better in the nearest future. And unfortunately, the space for uh, rights and freedoms is 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 shrinking as as actually in many countries of the world right now, which are not so expected, like, like the US. Um, but um, I'm still also quite optimistic that working for LGBT in Russia can can it is, there's still so much that we can do to improve lives of LGBT, maybe not working with the vertical power structures as in traditional advocacy, but working horizontally with society. Um, as was already mentioned, we, we, we see already how media coverage of the more independent media sources has been changing, has been improving, and that's a result of, of regular everyday work of meeting with journalists, of providing training for them on how to speak more correctly in developing relationships um, um, with, with friendly journalists to, to with, with a widening circle of, of friendly of allies. Uh, we also see how the LGBT movement is growing and gaining visibility, strength, competence, uh, solidarity between different groups is also very important. And we see how more allies join the, fly, uh, the fight. So I think that what we need to do is what we have been doing is movement building, supporting organizations, uh, making sure that activists don't burn out because sometimes that's what we do when it gets a little too much. Um, I am really believing in a lot of collaboration and solidarity between different LGBT groups, LGBT organizations. We support each other and that's very inspiring. And yeah, working with allies like businesses, journalists, lawyers, and psychologists to raise awareness of these specific groups of society, uh, specialist groups, who can really make a huge difference in how LGBT people are treated um, in society, medical doctors as well. Um, so yeah, I think that we just need to stay together, support each other, and we are on the right path. Thank you so much. Um... The same question to you, Olga. Yes, thank you. I mean, Polina summarized pretty much our advocacy work pretty, pretty well in this alliance building thing. And I, I would say that I hope that the society would be sort of more clever and wise than the government, which is generally the thing in Russia, I, I think. Like generally, when you look at the history, you see this very large um, gap between what the government proposes and what people actually do and believe in. And yes, I, I hope that just the 
the general population and this sort of middleman that the Polina is talking about, like doctors and psychologists and lawyers, uh, they would slowly uh, stop believing in these myths and stereotypes that the state propaganda is imposing. And yes, I am quite optimistic as well, since we see that it's already happening and it's just hopefully will get better. So thank you. Yeah, I can add you a few words uh, to this optimistic view. Uh, I'm an optimist as well, um, <clears throat> but from the same, uh, well, from my perspective, perspectives, we can uh, expect uh, different um, kind of trends, and they create uh, two different points of tension. You know, like in uh, physics, plus and minus, and um, and it can create a really strong gradient. And when you have this gradient, you can expect stronger and much more faster changes. And one direction is uh, towards uh, USSR style society and uh, toward criminalization of um, homosexuality like it was uh, in, uh, in Soviet Union. And another direction is a uh, young uh, generation, which is completely integrated into the global community, into global society, due to internet, due to global culture, movies, and music, and and it creates unavoidable changes in the in the mind, let's say. And as a result, you have two poles, two uh, points of tension between uh, between the kind of uh, view in the future for the future, and and it really at some point really reach the critical mass when all the changes will be uh, will be following to the avalanche you know no uh, when when you cannot uh, change the direction anymore and I think uh, we can expect it uh, within like 10 years five years when we reach this point uh, when business can support, when different politicians will support, when artists uh, uh, will support the LGBT, and it's only it's only the way I think to the future. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I kind of want to circle back to the beginning of our conversation because uh, before I will go into the questions that are from here posted on Zoom and from Facebook. Um, while we are talking, thousands of people have been taking themselves in St. Petersburg pride, virtually showing up. Uh, one of our Zoom guests even said they put a pride flag for every family member, which is lovely. Um, I want to ask you, um, what does it mean to you to see so many people showing up for you virtually in St. Petersburg? How does that make you feel? And um, how is the support uh, important to you? Um, so maybe we are going the same circle around again. So, um, Svetlana. Well, I truly believe in the global LGBT plus community. I believe that there is a strength in it and there is a beauty in it. And of course, it's great to see that so many people from all parts of the world are coming to the website to support us and our fight. And for me, it means like that we all do something, something important, something to change not only one place to the better, but to change all the world to the better. So it's really touching for me. Thanks, Svetlana. Uh, Polly, would you like to say something? Yes, I, I totally support. I agree uh, with, with Svetlana. It's, it's, this kind of support is so important because sometimes you see that uh, international community sometimes conflates Russia as in Russian government with, with Russian people. And uh, sometimes people feel that the cause for LGBT rights in Russia is, is just hopeless. And so we see that support and attention, you know, moves away from Russia. Um, but that's not good because there is, uh, there's LGBT people living in Russia today, uh, very many of us. And uh, it's, it's, it's extremely important to feel that the world is standing together with us and we are part of this world. Uh, 
it gives us a sense of larger community that we belong to and um, definitely makes us feel less isolated. So we, we in our organization, we always inform the community as much as we have access to the community and we have about 30,000 subscribers in our net networks, social networks. We always give as much visibility to this kind of support as, as possible. And it is a very empowering. And I thank you very much everybody for being with us in this way. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you. Um, I would say that when I, uh, this morning, I also opened this map and I just saw this amount, a number of, of flags and I felt the same way, uh, I believe I, I felt when I actually visited offline events. And it's about this feeling that it's just about love and it's about this freedom and support that just comes, uh, it reaches you from everywhere. And I, I think that would be amazing if more people could actually feel it. I mean, even if it's online uh, and it reaches you uh, so strongly. And because in Russia, many people, they believe that prides, uh, offline prides, especially, they are about lobbying someone's interests. You know, it's, it's about some people just organizing and, U.S. government possibly sponsoring them and all this. So when when you see this support just being illustrated like this on the map, you understand that it's not really about that. So it's it's about this global feeling of yeah, as as I said before, of of love and uh, of acceptance of another person. So yeah, I wish I wish it could be more often. It could just stay like that. And thank you. Yeah, uh, I can say that uh, for me, it's a really unexpected density of uh, of this flag, rainbow flags uh, on the map of St. Petersburg. And uh, when even when you zoom in, it's like uh, stars in the sky. They 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 become more and more. And uh, this uh, this feeling is uh, interesting because you feel you, you when you read, you see that it's really people from around the world, and I hope very soon, in some years, I will be happy to invite all of you who target the, uh, the map of St. Petersburg to invite you to a real life uh, experience in our city, even as a tourist, even without pride, but well, it will be better if you will join us uh, for the pride. Uh, this really can inspire a lot. And this, uh, this feeling give us give us a hope that uh, we can continue our struggle towards uh, equality. We will reach finally this point. I'm sure we will, and we all keep fighting together. Um, great. So actually, there are so many questions from the audience that I will pass on now. The first and foremost is, of course, that's what, why most people are here is how can they help you? Uh, how can international community help you? How can individuals help you? How are you working together with your counterparts in different countries? Can you give us a little bit of an overview and ideas and examples of how that can happen? take place. Uh, I don't want to just assign, you know, whoever would like to answer, please go ahead. Svetlana. Yeah, I turned on my microphone. Well, even so, uh, right now people cannot really gather. There are still many, many ways to support us, to support the LGBT community. You can obviously donate uh, to the work of LGBT organizations in Russia. And I think that quite many of us really need this support. Obviously, we don't have any support from the authorities. Uh, you can be a volunteer. We like uh, love volunteers. We quite often need them for translation, design, and all kinds of things. So if you want to support, please write to us. And of course, share information. Because uh, as Polina said, before sometimes we have a feeling that we are isolated and for us it's important when people are sharing information about what's going on in Russia in St. Petersburg like what's happening I will stop here and <laughs> we'll let other people also to say something 
Well, maybe I'll add a little bit about uh, collaborating with uh, various uh, LGBT organizations in, in the countries of Europe, the US. Uh, we have a lot of friends all over the world, uh, a lot of organizations that we're in contact with. And it's, uh, uh, we exchange experience, we can exchange volunteers. It's awesome for us when uh, people who make a contribution to our work, our volunteers can go and, and, and learn and, and just enjoy the atmosphere of freedom in other countries. Our volunteers have been invited to Pride in different countries and that is the most emotional and, and inspiring experience I can, I can imagine because when you're marching with 60,000 people and, and, and as many people are waving rainbow flags, uh, grandmas and, and, you know, and families with kids are, are all um, supporting you in this way. It's, it's, you come back to Russia and you want to work and you want to do something to improve the situation here. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, is there? Uh, I can I can say if Olga is not uh, ready now. Uh, just a few words. When you are uh, thinking about Russia, if you are an artist, try to cooperate with uh, people from Russia, with uh, artists from Russia, and create something together. Any uh, kind of art, uh, movies, uh, music, uh, what what you do. If you are a politician, think uh, the way you can push Russian politicians towards uh, equality, which is uh, written in the international laws, and you can cooperate with uh, with the Russian politicians to develop uh, changes and to ask them ask them questions. They don't like really uh, answer certain questions. Um, if you are if you have some friends from Russia, share the information, share your culture, and they will give a, give your response uh, in response uh, their knowledge and their culture. I think uh, it's only the way to be um, global society. It's only the future because isolation, self isolation of country. We know how it happens uh, in the Soviet Union, and I think it's it's not the the way we all want to see, I mean, both in, in Russia and uh, in other countries around it. Otherwise we will be uh, separated for years and years and no way to future. Um, Olga, I don't know if that is a, you want to speak or? <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. No, I, I believe that everyone said what I was thinking about. So since me and Polina we represent the same organization, we'll just switch. Thank you so much. Um, another question is a bit more specific. Uh, Sue from York is asking how you're tackling the link between church and state, how church is intervening in the discussion of LGBT policies. Um, maybe you can say a few words to that and how that's involved in your work. I can, I can start this time. Um, I would say that in the Russia church, uh, it's double-sided thing because on the one hand, they are quite strong and um, our state, uh, our government isn't fully separated from church. And on the other hand, the things that church says about uh, LGBT rights and community and the same thing that they say about women's rights a lot about uh, abortions and domestic violence. I can't say that, uh, I, I don't have a feeling at least that it's been uh, taken seriously. So as long as legally they stay outside and they cannot really influence what's going on in terms of law, um, it is more or less, we, we can't tackle them directly. We can't say that, you know, we can only say that this is not uh, realistic or that this is just, this shouldn't be said in 21st century, you know, so <laughs> we can't go and sue them. Uh, on, on the other hand, I would say that a lot of uh, people in the in the community, they um, or maybe not a lot, but there are some people who are religious and that 
that would be uh, a huge dilemma for them because the church doesn't uh, accept them and maybe not even Orthodox Church, uh, other, other religions. And this, this is the issue that we can work with. So some of our um, support groups, for instance, include discussions on this topic. Uh, which is good and this is productive where people could find how how can they believe and at the same time be uh, you know rejected by this church but there is no final decision <laughs> of this question just yet thank you so much for that um I'm kind of, we're kind of opening a bit of a bracket here uh, another question from our audience is um, related to the topic of international support, but in the economic sphere, we have seen a huge rise in popularity of private sector and big companies embracing diversity, supporting LGBTI rights. Um, has you you mentioned that you are wanting to work with companies, but they're, they're, this kind of spirit has not yet arrived. Uh, do you have a game plan? Do you think that um, this tendency will also arrive in Russia? Uh, or are you already having some good examples of that? You already mentioned that there is a small network. Um, can you talk to that a little bit? Um, yes, yeah, so this is this is what we've seen as well as is, is, is businesses becoming a little more open to dialogue with LGBT organizations around topics of how they can promote diversity. Um, because if we're talking about multinational firms, for example, they, they have these um, social responsibility policies, diversity policies on the level of their headquarters, which they have to follow and they have to implement them, um, including in Russia. Uh, so, so they are trying. Um, there is a there is some will to do that, but what we see is that they are mortally afraid. They are um, afraid of everything. They're afraid of a propaganda of homosexuality law, which actually does not apply to 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 them. Because if we're talking, uh, for example, about creating safer spaces, safer workspa workplaces for LGBT people. Uh, that does not involve working with minors in, in in any way, and this propaganda of homosexuality law in Russia is is it only uh, concerns information about homosexuality given to minors. But they're still extremely afraid because um, the way things uh, work in Russia is not it doesn't have to be completely um, fitting under the law. Uh, basically, if if a company becomes in the media s s associated with working with LGBT, then it's not going to matter that they're not working with minors in any way. It's, it's still going to uh, have an effect, an impact on their reputation, and this is what they're afraid of. Um, but there are tiny, small steps that we can do, and we already started doing, uh, with large multinational firms like IBM, like, like Hogan Lovells uh, is, is very LGBT friendly. Uh, the, the, their branch in Russia, um, is to, uh, for example, provide trainings for HR departments on how to um, more ethically and correctly work with LGBT employees on how to handle complaints about harassment or violence from LGBT employees, on how to create a more inclusive atmosphere, on how to work with general employees so that they are more... Um, aware of this, these situations. Uh, so, so yeah, this is what we're doing. We're creating trainings for HR uh, personnel. We are uh, uh, running surveys on how LGBT people feel in different organizations and create platforms for experience exchange and exchange of best practices between these organizations, between these businesses. Um, another thing that we can do is with smaller local Russian businesses, um, they are also, I think they realize that LGBT is kind of a big proportion of the market, <laughs> if we can say that, that, that it's, um, it's, it's a good business model for them to be LGBT friendly. Um, so sometimes what we can do is again, provide trainings for their staff uh, on how to work more ethically with LGBT people, how to provide ethical services. Um, and then we inform our communities that this, this local business, for example, went through our training, so they should be 
friendly and uh, and, if, and and then we gather feedback from people who have visited these these uh, these businesses to make sure that they are indeed friendly. So these these kind of things we we are developing and. Um, I foresee that it will be like an exponential growth of companies that will get involved. Well, we hope so. And we wish you best of luck with that. And I'm sure there's a lot of organizations out there that will be happy to support you and work with you as well. And uh, unfortunately, we only have five minutes left. I could talk to you forever, of course, but I, I kind of want to end on a personal note and ask you just a little bit more of a you question. Uh, Yuri, actually, I want to ask you, because we're talking about St. Petersburg Pride, we're talking about Pride, you have been co-organizing it. What does Pride actually mean to you personally? Yeah. I unmuted my mic. Uh, for me, I think there is a very close similarities between uh, between individual, between person and, and the society. They they grow up in a similar way, and at some point, in certain point, you start to understand, you start to feel that you are individual having rights, having different. Uh, opinions on on different points and as a result you have a freedom of speech as a result you have a freedom of uh, assembly to meet friends to play games uh, as a kid and in the same way social uh, structure i mean the society works in the similar way uh, and the social groups within society they have the similar uh, growing up uh, process and at some at certain point you start to feel uh, that you have a word to say you have a statement to say you have a, you have a right to assemble people to have uh, meetings to have a uh, marches and and for me pride is a kind of a social coming out I mean, coming out of a social group. And it's like close similarity, I think, uh, and understanding of this of this word. And of course, uh, other part, other side of this word is uh, to feel a dignity who you are, because you deserve to be who you are, not uh, uh, to be someone who, uh, who is uh, affected by you know government by parents by friends but if you feel something interested in you know in science in music you have a right to do it and the same for for a social group as lgbt and i think these two sides of coins reflect so well my my feeling about pride Uh, thank you so much. Uh, one more quick question to Polina. Uh, well, I don't know how quick it is. Um, how has the fight for love and equality in Russia impacted you as, as a person? Uh, how, has it, how has it changed you personally, politically, socially? How has it affected you? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I've been I've been in uh, in activism for the last twelve years. Um, so actually, from the beginning of, of our organization and. Um, these have probably been the most meaningful years of my life. And I have to say that, it, you know, it's one thing to watch the, the injustices that are happening around, um, the ignorance, the, you know, the, the just, uh, just bad things uh, happening. And to be a passive observer, it's very difficult because then you feel uh, powerless and you feel more as a, as a victim. Um, and it is just much more empowering to ac actually actively fight against these injustices and try to change something. And that's why I'm doing it myself. And that's why I am. Um, I take great joy in doing whatever I can do to to help other LGBT people to regain their dignity um, and and feeling of self-respect to get actively involved in defending their own rights and the rights of, 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 the, of their loved ones. I think that it, it gives people this 
great boost of power and um, sorry it's it's uh, it's very empowering to everybody and i also take a uh, great joy in in seeing how constructive engagement and uh, dialogue helps us uh, change hearts and minds of people around us because this has also been happening so this is very inspiring work to me although sometimes quite uh, stressful and sometimes you're I'm close to burnout, but I always come back with this uh, uh, feeling of empowerment uh, with the thought that in the long term, we're moving in the right direction. Well, those are the perfect closing words. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank again everybody uh, that came to listen to us on Facebook and Zoom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Svetlana, Polina, Olga, Yuri, for taking the time to talk to us for all your great work. Um, and please go and point your uh, pin your flag in St. Petersburg Pride to uh, virtually march together with these great activists. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Happy Pride, everyone. Happy Pride Month and uh, goodbye. Thank you. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Bye-bye. Happy Pride. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.